Okay, it's Sunday just after lunchtime. I am driving down to the airport for Cool Stars 20. It's the last big meeting I have this year, and I'm giving a talk to a pretty big audience. So I gotta make sure that lands right. I need to practice today and tomorrow. And I've been prepping for this meeting for a few weeks, writing my talk, getting some work done, but my mental prep begins here, begins on my drive to the airport. This is the moment when I start getting my game face on. After I've left home, the suitcases are in the car. Until I land back home, I'll be in work mode. This is gonna be a good meeting. I love Boston, it's a great town. We'll be mostly over at Boston University. There's a ton of amazing astronomers who work in Boston. Friends of mine I haven't seen in a long time. It's gonna be fun. of this session before the coffee break. Uh, rotating stars from Kepler, observed with Gaia DR2 by James Davenport, University of Washington. I landed at midnight last night, I apologize for that. Okay, we'll jump right in. So in the long list of superlatives that you can use to describe... Three uh, models fail to reproduce a number of observational properties for low mass stars and young clusters. Most of these problems actually could be solved by the hypothesis, and be careful there, the hypothesis that they are inflated, uh, possibly by magnetic fields. Top right panel here, uh, it's a calcium K line, and uh, the black curve here is uh, in a rotational phase which the star is more inactive. So choose your moments. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of a really exciting Cool Stars moment is and the Cool Stars Seattle meeting when Davy Kirkpatrick gave the plenary talk and uh, it was announced there why dwarfs were a thing. They've been discovered, we've broken the T-dwarf boundary. My name is Sarah Jane Schmidt. I'm a postdoc at the Leibniz Institute for Astrophysics in Potsdam. And I study the smallest stars, but I'm most interested in their magnetic fields and how they evolve over time and how they cause flares and other sorts of activity. My name is Brett Morris. I work on stellar activity and exoplanets. My 10 second advice to you is that if you're a grad student, you're going to a conference, don't go to every talk. That's it. I'm Sarah Ballard. I'm at MIT, and I'm here to learn about how to figure out the ages of MDORs. Hi, my name is Stephanie Douglas. I'm an NSF fellow at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and I study stellar rotation in open clusters, uh, both how it correlates with magnetic activity and uh, multiplicity. Uh, I'm looking at this one because I'm actually doing a planet search. Um, we don't know a lot about planets and clusters, but planets and candidates. We're finding some very, very eccentric person binaries. Good morning. We are here in Boston, Massachusetts for the Cool Stars 20, the Cool Stars 20 meeting. So it's Wednesday, the middle day of the week, and today's schedule is a full slate of talks in the morning with a coffee break. Uh, and then in the afternoon, instead of the topical sessions that we've been having all week, uh, they have time for excursions. For those of us who have been to Boston a bunch, a bunch of us are going to hide out in a coffee shop and get some work done. So it's Wednesday. I gave a talk on Monday, the first day of the conference, and I posted the full video of that talk on this channel a couple days ago. So if you want to see that talk, go check out that video. I'll put the link below. One thing the conference organizers have done this time, which is really cool, is they've put these little uh, images on your badge. Um, so I put one of the graphs from my talk, uh, and on the other side, I put one of the graphs that represents the gender survey that we've been doing, which I've talked about on this channel before, and I'll put another link to below. Cool Stars was my very first meeting, Cool Stars 14, way back in 2006. It was my first like real astronomy conference. So 
it's always good to come back. It is a cool meeting to talk at. If you go to the AAS meeting, uh, which I showed in January uh, on this channel, uh, if you give one of the big talks, the plenary talks, you could be speaking to a couple thousand astronomers. It's a big audience. Uh, but if you give one of the normal sort of session talks, uh, like I did, eh, you're talking to like 50, maybe 100. So the main session in Cool Stars is about 500 people which is a really big meeting for being such a small focused topic. Oh yeah, one of the things that started becoming a tradition at Cool Stars meetings is uh, swag. A tradition now, in the last few ones, is like coffee mugs or tea mugs. So I think I have four of these so far uh, from various meetings, um, and they're usually pretty nice. I'm Mark Vayet, uh, and I find out what small stars are made out of. Hi, I'm Julie Skinner, and I'm measuring distances and looking for planets around the very smallest stars. Hi, I'm Carl Schmidt. I'm a research scientist at Boston University, and I study escaping planetary atmospheres. Hi, my name is Phil Muirhead. I'm an assistant professor of astronomy here at Boston University, and I'm on the scientific organizing committee for this conference. And uh, I decided to do a presentation on uh, TESS, the smallest stars that TESS will observe and search for planets. I have uh, some thoughts about how to, these two different scenarios could influence what you're observing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the majority of the measurements in the past 40 years have either been high spectral resolution over a very narrow spectral band pass, or they've been integrated over a fairly broad band pass. And similarly with the extreme ultraviolet images that we've obtained from SDOAA, the particular the 94 ancient channel. Two other points before we do the picture. One. <laughs> And James and I will edit ourselves in seamlessly. I'm Serge Dietrich. I work at Carnegie's Department of Astromagnetism. I think the cool thing about cool stars is to just see the complexity evolve in the field. My name is Meredith Joyce. I am currently at Dartmouth, though I just defended three weeks ago and I will be changing soon. What this poster is on is optimizing mixing length calibrations for systems which are sufficiently well constrained. Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Rotenbacher and I image the surfaces of active stars with a variety of different techniques. Hi, my name is Laura Mayorga, and I'm here at Cool Stars for my brown dwarfs because I'm interested in studying the diversity of exoplanet atmospheres, and they're very similar to giant planets. I said what I came to say. <laughs> Mic drop. And now for a true Cool Stars tradition, the banquet. It's like we're there. Well, we've just finished with the banquet. It's been another good week. You can get in here if you want. <laughs> Very good cool stars. Looking it's been a great cool next one. You were on the SOC, right? I was on the SOC. Thank you for a great meeting. Oh, thank you so much. The banquet is always one of the biggest highlights of the meeting. They always have good food. They always pick a cool location. And the most exciting part is they tell you when the next cool stars and where it will be. So in two years, we will be in Toulouse, France, which is really cool. I'm on a 9 a.m. flight back to Seattle. It's been a good meeting.